Today on All Things 80s, toy hunting in 1980. Welcome back to All Things 80s. Now, back in the 80s, when I was a lad, there obviously was no internet. And really, the only way we would learn about new toys was through catalogues. Now, my mum would have a couple of these catalogues. And when a new one would arrive, it was always such a thrill to go straight to the toy section and see what the new toys were. Also, as a side note, these catalogues uh, also contained clothing and household items, etc. And it was always a bit of a thrill to look at the ladies' underwear section. And uh, if you were lucky, you might see one of these 80s chicks posing in her see-through lingerie, which was always quite a thrill. So anyway, the catalogue we're going to look at today is from 1980, from a store called Argos, who sadly did not sell ladies' underwear, so we're not going to look at that today, but we are going to look at the toy section and to see what they had on offer and how much they were charging back in 1980. Right, so here we are. This is the Winter of 1980 catalogue from Argos. And the first thing in the toy department are these amazing Atari video computer TV games. Uh, I never had one of these always wanted one. I did play one a few times. And this one is uh, item, what, number one, I'm assuming. So if you look at the price here, yep, Atari Video Computer System, £99.99p. Wow. And the games ranging from, what, £15 up to 23 They're actually... Thinking back to 1980, this was an extremely expensive item and the games are very expensive. Um, I'm sure when we flip the pages we'll see, you know, how much other toys cost and you will learn that these games and the system itself was extremely expensive and was probably out of the reach of most people. Uh, here's a couple more from Grandstand. It says Binatone. So number two is, uh, let's see, come on, there we go. Uh, wow, £18 for a colour video game that you play on your TV. So that's what I'm saying. Atari was 100 and this was only 18 Quite a big difference there. And number three is, uh, oh, it's a Grandstand Kevin Keegan colour video game. £19. Wow. Uh, shooting game from, again, Binatone, number four, £13. So, you know, the Atari was pretty unobtainable to most kids back then. More handheld electronic games. Oh, I don't really remember any of these. I do remember Little Professor. Never had one, but I do remember it. Number seven is, wow, that's 40 pounds. That, even that was pretty damned expensive. Uh, computer Battleship, Simon, remember Simon, uh, number 11, 20 pounds. So it's quite strange that those uh, plug into your TV games are actually cheaper than some of these, these uh, electronic games. Ah, Star Wars from Chad, no, Chad Valley. It rings a bell, but I always thought that in the UK, Palatoy were the ones that produced Star Wars. Number 14, 19 pounds. So this is Star Wars Electronic Battle Command Game, microcomputer, which allows you to simulate all the exciting action and strategy of interspace combat. Hmm, never seen one of these before. Never knew anyone that had one. Uh, flip the page. Ah, now we're talking. Ah, big track. Uh, never had that. A friend of mine did, and he let me play it one time, and he said, what to do is just punch in some numbers and see what it does. And uh, I unknowingly programmed it to, to make its blaster sound like a hundred times, and that was it. I was like, this thing sucks. Tin Can Alley. I do remember that. I always wanted it, but was never allowed it. How much was it? Number... Six, number six, 28 pounds. Yeah, not cheap back then. 
Interestingly, it came with uh, Dr. Pepper cans, and if memory serves, we did not have Dr. Pepper available to buy back then, so that was, it was quite a novelty to see that. Uh, interesting that this is all Matchbox uh, slot cars, because I do remember having Skelectrics, and Skelectrics were huge. Maybe they hadn't come out yet. Interesting. Uh, School of Motoring, that's quite funny. Interstate Crime Buster. Now looking at that uh, controller, number three, let's see. Uh, number three. Yep, Sonic Car. Direction changes by sound emitted from the click of the microphone. Now that click sound was extremely loud and annoying. And I remember if you took those clickers and put it to someone's ear and uh, pressed it, their head would be ringing for hours afterwards. Uh, TCR, I remember that. Still no Skelectrics. Hang on, they have Skelectrics cars down here, uh, but no track. Number, is number three a track? Nope, interesting. Hmm, I guess we'll get to that when we look at other catalogues maybe. Uh, Hornby Railways, uh, never, I was never into railways, I just found them quite boring. But in, immediately I'm drawn to this, number 11, the uh, Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. And this is the one I had as a child. Uh, I recently reviewed the newer one that came out from California Creations and commented on how I remember the bike being mostly white. And as we see here, this was indeed the bike I had. But uh, my uh, gyro power contraption was yellow and not red. Palatoy, cool. Uh, what else is there here? Uh, more railways. Uh, nothing else I really remember, although I do recall wanting this set from Matchbox where you would slide the cars down the track and it would do the loop-the-loop. -loop. Ah, now we're talking, but where's the figures? And again, this is Chad Valley doing Star Wars. This is not at all familiar to me. And this looks like the 12-inch Darth Vader. How much was it? £4.99. And of course he was taller, he was 15 inches. And this looks like a Stormtrooper blaster. 899. Revolving barrel movement. Hmm. And it had laser sound, of course. £8.99. Uh, now this is Palatoy ROM. Do not remember that, but I do remember Action Man from Palatoy. And I did indeed have the talking commander and he was costing £7.29. So the normal Action Man was £5.49. So for a little under £2 you were getting the talking uh, feature. Because walkie-talkies were always good, but uh, don't be fooled by the way this has been uh, advertised. You could actually see here the cable, and these were not... Uh, wireless by any means. They had a, this long, long cable between the two of them. I actually still have one uh, that I brought back from my parents' house recently. It was Knight Rider, but it was always a bit disappointing because you would think from that that this was a genuine walkie-talkie, but nah, you had that long cable between you. Of course, the Action Man, actually, uh, well, the Palatoim has to be an Action Man item, yeah. Pursuit Craft. But number eight, uh, da, 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 da. can't even read that. Cherry Lee Jeep and Trailer. So this was a generic uh, vehicle for your action man. Or does it actually come with one? Number number eight uh, with operating winch and tow hook fold down. Da, 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 da. Ah, for use with figures up to 12 inches high. So this was just your generic one. This one, this uh, number, what's that, six? The training tower, that looked amazing. Uh, I guess this is like a Stretch Armstrong type thing. Again, Chad Valley, interesting. Battle Cruiser, Micronauts, but there's no Micronaut figures. 
interesting starboard and this one makes sounds uh ping ping vroom what the hell uh number 13 electronic starboard the amazing spaceship with realistic engines simulating acceleration and deceleration don't remember that at all lego now this was the one i always wanted but was never allowed and that was costing 16 pounds 50. uh i had this uh, motor set that was a lot of fun and anything else chemistry set always wanted one was never allowed one i guess my parents didn't trust me and thought i was going to blow the place up uh Barber shop for Play-Doh. I wanted that badly, but uh, I imagine that my mom envisioned me spreading Play-Doh all over the carpets. Horror makeup. I, I really wanted that. I was never allowed that either. Ah, Mr. Frosty. I always wanted that. I was never allowed that. What the hell? This is like th this catalog is just taunting me here. The hell is number nine? Corgi Movie Vision projects from standard cassettes onto either a frontal or external screen. Remove control. Remote control panel allows film to stop, reverse, and run fast or slow. Focusing knob for fine-tune adjustment, complete with snap-up sealed cassette. Operates by six HP2 batteries. I have no idea what that is. Uh, nothing here of any interest to a young lad. Girl about town, that's funny. It's like a man's wallet though. Strange. It's quite funny how they uh, produce toys to kind of train girls to know their place in the house. So you've got the washing machine, the baking set, ironing board and iron, dustpan and brush, vacuum. Superb. Uh, oh. Palatoy did this. Yeah. Actually, this uh, this brings back memories. Not that I had them, of course, but I remember sisters of friends having Cindy dolls. And there was obviously Barbie as well, but I think that Cindy was more popular than Barbie in the UK. Can't really confirm or deny that because I'm not into girls' toys, but, you know, there you go. Uh, more girl stuff. Uh, bikes, but rally. I'm looking for like the rally grifter and the rally uh, boxer. And what was the other one? The tomahawk, I think. Yeah, no, nothing really interesting there. That's Dusty Bin, I think. The show was, uh, was it Ted Rogers and 321? I better just check number 12. Yeah, Dusty Bin from the TV series 321. Uh, don't remember anything. I remember seeing this uh, Jack in the Box a lot. I think they had one in my primary school. This is, this is really for babies. Uh, more baby stuff. But I am seeing Fisher Price Adventure People. Uh, yes, number 12. So that set for two figures, bike, van, canoe, and parachute was costing uh, ten pounds twenty nine. Not at all bad. Good value there. Uh, Major Morgan. I remember seeing that, but I don't remember what it did though. Number eleven. Uh, to play, simply insert a song card and touch the electronic keyboard according to the letters, numbers, colors, or symbols shown. Mm, yeah, it brings back a vague memory, but I don't recall too much about that. Cosmic Clash of the Cosmic Robots. Um, remember that vaguely. Now, this is interesting. Crazy Maze. I had this, but it was definitely called Screwball Scramble and not Crazy Maze by Chad Valley. I need to research this Chad Valley. They seem to be doing a lot of things back then 
and interesting that they are existing at the same time as Palatoy. Turn the terrible tank. Mm, interesting. Nine. What's nine? Uh, the menacing machine turns against its own commander with its revolving nose. Fire steel balls to try to turn the tank. Run out of steel balls and the tank keeps coming. <laughs> Interesting wording there. I mean, if it runs out of balls, how can it keep coming? I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, anything here? Ah, the professionals. And chips. A chips helmet set. That's what, number 13. Uh, John and Ponch tackle the lawbreakers. Comprises realistic helmet and communications set. And of course, interestingly, uh, we had none of this crap where you had to put those orange tips on guns, you know. We were, we lived in a time when, you know, kids could really reenact things they saw on TV without it looking extremely fake. And snooker tables, table football. Ah, te I remember test match because um, towards the end of the school term, especially at, uh, the, before the Christmas holidays and the summer holidays, we'd be allowed to bring in games to play. And uh, one of my friends brought this in and I thought it was a fantastic game. The hell's that? Globber? Popomatic Globber. Now, pop matic is something I remember from the game, I think it was called Trouble. Um, it was just to, to replace, you know, a, a dice that you would shake and, and throw on the, on, on the table. This kind of contained the dice inside. Perfection, I remember playing that. Ha, huh. so this looks like the end of it. Yeah, so that was 1980. Um, Interestingly, so I would have been six years old and I don't remember a great deal of these toys, but that was a nice sort of look back there. So I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane there. And uh, I'm thinking I might do more of these videos because I have found more uh, catalogues from various years in the 80s. So we can see how things progressed and what was in fashion, what fell out of fashion. That's for another time. So hopefully it was a good video for you and you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do like, please subscribe and see you in the next video looking at all things 80s.